This was my monocopter from last video. Thrust was low, the servo sucked, it used a $20 Arduino, and it basically had no PID. My next iteration improves efficiency, uses two metal servos instead of four plastic ones, uses a long fly flight board with a teensy, and attempts to implement a PID. To test it, I hung it up on a string and let the EDF rip from there. This is how most of my tests look like. So what you see here is gyroscopic precession, uh, but to be more precise, instability caused by gyroscopic precession. I had a bunch of useful comments from my last video about this phenomenon, but it actually took testing the monocopter on the string to really understand this issue for myself. This is a clip of Veritasium demonstrating this phenomenon with the spinning bicycle wheel. If we can imagine the singular rotating fan as a spinning wheel, then we can clearly see how the torque of the wheel affects the angular momentum vector. And then this clip of Spencer Sutterman gives a really clear example of how something like an airplane with a prop is affected by this 90 degree shift in attitude. So essentially when the thrust vanes produce torque to the spinning monocopter, the system wants to align itself with the angular momentum vector, which is the result of this new torque combined with the spin. However, with the current control system I have, the effect snowballs as the vanes are trying their best to actuate in the way that they're currently programmed. Anyways, this is definitely something to be sorted out on the flight controller, which leads me to my first improvement in this iteration, which is using a TNT 4.0 on this Longfly Dream V1. It's a fully Arduino compatible board, so I was able to implement my code from previous projects pretty much line for line. The inbuilt MPU and its integration to the board is way better out of the box than any sort of complementary and low pass filter setup I was using on the Amazon MPU with the Arduino Uno. And then to top it all off, the TNT is running at 600 megahertz using an ARM processor, and so there's really no reason for me to keep using the Arduinos. I'm happy I learned the C++, but again, it's basically the same uh, with the Dream and TNT flight board. So now I'm going to go into the hardware improvements I made this time around, but before I go to that, I just want to quickly talk about JLC PCB, who's sponsoring this video. JLC is a PCB, 3D printing, metal CNC, and mechatronic service with pretty much the most competitive rates in the market. For projects like this one, all the way to industrial prototyping, you can pretty much fully build out anything you can think of, even if you're working out of a college dorm or office space and don't have these big fancy PCB fabricators or 5-axis machines. JLC has an incredible website with features like instant quotes and real-time order trackers. To order any part I want, I upload my file, go through their extensive list of customizations and speckings, and then get an instant quote with lead times as little as 24 hours. Definitely check these guys out, they can make pretty much anything you can think of. I'm adding a link in the description to their website. So I was lucky enough to use the same EDF casing I had been using and just recycle it from my 3D printing planes and then the previous monocopter. I tore everything off my last one and reprinted a bunch of tiny parts. I upgraded to these MG90S servos, which uh, solve a lot of the twitching problems I had before with those cheap plastic ones. I attempted a two servo mechanism that looks like this. It's a bit clunky, but it works, although this obviously creates a whole new set of problems with aerodynamics and the EDF efficiency. I don't know if I'll keep it. In any case, I'll have to slim it down because the axles are something like 10 millimeters thick. I laid the long fly flat because I had trouble coming up with the Z-axis angles, uh, but I was kind of rushing the project along at this point. I added three stands that sits a few mil taller than my first ones, which hopefully decreases any sort of ground effects I had in my previous iteration. Lastly, I changed the orientation of the battery. I laid it straight up as opposed to on its long side and then added slots in the bridge. The whole idea is to decrease the wetted area of this battery bridge if you're looking down into the EDF. You can hopefully see the difference side by side in CAD. Another thing about this design choice is that it brings the center of gravity even higher, which should increase static stability even though there were drastically different opinions on this in the last video. Anyways, I was able to cut the weight of the design by 23 grams, which is about 4% down from the last one, so it's pretty decent. The overall drag coefficient of this new body is definitely worse, and then the weird mess of the two servo system might detract any performance gain I get by optimizing the intake, but I'm happy that everything works. In my testing, there is this weird power band where if I release the monocopter at this throttle, it actually looks like it's thrust vectoring like it's supposed to. Obviously, this is with a ton of overshoot, but that's where the PID comes in. 
This is definitely the most encouraging part of my testing, although again, this is at a very specific fan speed and with me holding the monocopter and only releasing it after it accelerates. The goal obviously is full takeoff, hover, and then landing. Anyways, thanks for following along. I hope these type of projects are helping people out there trying to attempt similar things. As always, I'm happy to discuss improvements in the comments, um, especially with this whole gyroscopic procession thing and what that means for my control loops going forward. Big thanks to Longfly for sending me this really cool flight controller stack and then JLC for sponsoring this video.